my soul at rest from him comes my salvation he only is my rock my strength and my My strong hope, my Savior, I shall not be afraid at Waters of baptism, Peg is died with Christ. May the Lord be merciful to her. May the Lord grant her eternal peace. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Troubles cease. And 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So you can please be seated, and you can remain seated throughout Mass. And you're very welcome today as we come to celebrate the funeral Mass of somebody very much loved, above all by her family, the late Peg McCabe. And today, as I welcome all of you here in the church here in St. Patrick's, we welcome all who join us for our Mass over the parish radio, and those who join us over via the webcam today in various different places and various parts of the world. Hopefully you'll be able to see us, hear us loud and clear. So you're all very welcome as we, as I say, come to pray for Peg and to thank God for a very long life and a very full life, a life very much of faith, a life committed to family and a life of goodness. So I begin as we place the book of the Gospels here on our coffin, reminding us very much that Peg was that person of faith and that her faith inspired her, give her great encouragement all through her long life. And today we come as a community and above all as family and friends to remember Peg, to Peg blessed with that wonderful long life, 98 years, nearly a century. Indeed, a life that wasn't always easy, a life that there were many challenges, but again, a life of a person, Peg, who had great inner strength and, as I say, great faith, committed to life, committed to family, and committed to going on with life each day. So now that our earthly journey has ended and that God in his own time has chosen to call Peg to himself, we pray for our Mass today. Peg who loved coming to Mass and Peg the person of faith, we pray today that God will grant her pardon, God will grant her peace, and that God will bless and comfort her family. And today as we think of our family, our thoughts and our prayers are very much with our sons and daughters, family are very precious to her all through life. So we pray today that God will comfort our daughters Marie, Marie Caplice, and our daughter Veronica Morrison, and then our two sons, James and Paul, sons-in-law Richard and Hugh, daughter-in-law Marie and Paul's partner Etna. 
And then the grandchildren who she dearly adored who were very precious to her, Neves, Rhea, Shireen, Daryl, Owen and Connor, very precious to her, as were indeed her nine great-grandchildren, her brother Paddy, nephews, nieces, relatives and friends. People are very close to Peg, Peg who loved people, loved the company of people, loved friendship, good humour and all that was best in life. So today as we pray God's blessing on our family who will miss Peg so very much, we pray that God will comfort them and we pray indeed that Peg will enjoy peace and happiness in God's presence with all of our family who have gone before her to God. And so for a moment around the altar of God as we acknowledge one worthiness in the presence of God, we ask his pardon for ourselves, for each other and for Peg who has gone before us to God. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, and through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And let us pray. And for a moment we pray for Peg that she will enjoy peace and happiness forever in God's presence. God of endless ages, from one generation to the next, you have been our refuge and our strength. Before the mountains were born and the earth came to be, you are God. Have mercy now on Peg, whose long life was spent in your service, in the service of family and friend, in the service of other people. Grant her a place in your kingdom, where hope is firm for all her love, and rest is sure for all who serve. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. And we listen to our readings from God's Word. The lovely first reading, as you find in your leaflets, reminding us that God is the God of goodness, the God of favours, and that the favours of God never end. A reading from the Book of Lamentations. The favours of the Lord are not all past. His kindness is not exhausted. Every morning... His kindness, his goodness is renewed. Great is his faithfulness. My portion is the Lord, says my soul, and as I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those that trust him, to the soul that searches for him. It is good to wait in silence for the Lord to save. The word of the Lord. shall cross the barren desert, but you shall not die of thirst. You shall wander far in safety, though you do not know the way. You shall speak your words in foreign lands, and they will understand. Shall see the face of God and live. Be not afraid. I go before you always. Come, follow me, and I.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. St. Paul assures us that nothing can become between us and the love of Christ, nothing in life or in death. Nothing can come between us and the love of Christ, even if we are troubled or worried or being persecuted or lacking food or clothes or being threatened or even attacked. These are the trials through which we triumph by the power of him who loves us. For I am certain of this, neither death nor life, no angel, no prince, nothing that exists, nothing still to come can ever come between us and the power and the love of God made visible in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. Shine, alleluia. Shine, alleluia. Shine, alleluia. Shine, alleluia. Shine, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. And Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God still and trust in me. There are many rooms in my Father's house. If there were not, I should have told you. I am going down to prepare a place for you. And after I have gone and prepared you a place, I shall return to take you with me, so that where I am, you may be too. You know the way to the place where I am going. And Thomas said, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. You can be seated for a few moments. And today we find, as we reflect on the death of Peg, somebody has said, cherished and loved above all by her family and close friends. And Jesus says those lovely words to us, do not let your hearts be troubled, trust in God. And then he gives us a good reason. As he says, there are many rooms in my father's house. A very simple and beautiful image that God has given each one of us a gift of life and has a very special place for us, like Peg in this world, has that special space for us in the world to come. And Jesus puts it in the simplest of terms by saying that God has that special room, that special space in God's presence, and indeed the presence of loved ones, of family and friends who have gone before us. A lovely, simple image. And I suppose one that means so much in today's world where Young people love their own room, their own space, that's very precious to them. And Jesus used that lovely image that God has that special place for us all. And then he could say to us, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God, because God has a plan, a wonderful plan for us all in this world, and a plan for eternity, for us to be forever happy in God's presence. And it was that great sense of faith that I think inspired Peg all through her life, like so many people of her generation, she had that wonderful sense of God's presence, that God was with her in life, and that was true when life was going well in happy times, and indeed in sad times and challenges, of which Peg had a fair share. She had that wonderful sense that God is present in life, and with God's presence one can cope whatever comes, because God will give us the strength we need in life each day. And they say that was the strength that inspired Peg, that inner strength that she had based on her strong faith. And today, as I say, we thank God for Peg's very long life, a wonderful long life that was so precious to her, a life that she cherished and a life that she lived very much to the full. And Peg herself, born back in, in September 1922 in Loch Marlow over in County Galway. And when you think back in 1922, so long ago, and born into that world as part of a family, when she had five brothers, one sister, and a very closely bonded family, as families were very much at the time, a very closely bonded family, 
We're a family that loved the outdoor life and above all athletics because we're a family that dominated the national cycling scene, the stage, for decades. And Peg, as I say, grew up in 1922. We can scarcely imagine nowadays what, uh, what Ireland was like at the time, coming a few years after 1916, and then into independence, civil war and all of that, when there was so, so little in life, very few opportunities, and particularly for women of the time, life was very hard. We had none of the modern conveniences, and as I said, there were no opportunities for travel, or indeed education and so on. People had a very simple life. And into that world, Peg, as I say, was born as Margaret Mannion. And then, growing up very quickly, she got herself involved in the whole life of confectionery. And that was how she trained. She trained as a confectioner. And she experienced working a number of bakeries around home, around Galway, before she came and settled to work in Clonus with the McCabe family at the Creighton Bakery in Clonus. And it was there that she met her late husband, who we fondly remember today in our mass, her late husband Seamus, and settled down in Clonus then with her five children. And there she played a pivotal role in the family, first and foremost with her family rearing her family, so loyal and good to her husband Seamus, rearing her family, a great family person, and then pay, playing that very central role in the family bakery and her bar business in Fermanagh Street. So she was a busy woman, always busy with family that came first, then with the bakery, the bar business, always busy and occupied. And that's how she, if you like, spent those early years of life, busy rearing her family, working hard, but so content to go on with what was good in life, family, hard work, and doing what was best. And then, in 1972, her life was turned upside down with the tragic loss of her beloved daughter Bernadette at the tender age of just 14 years while they were on holiday in the Donegal Gaeltacht. Sadly, that her daughter died was a huge tragedy for indeed Peg and for all the family. And very quickly then, that tragedy was followed by another tragedy, the untimely death, loss of her husband Seamus, just two years later after a protracted terminal illness. So Peg certainly had a lot to cope with in those early years, but despite having lost so much, she struggled on because of very difficult years. She lost her home then during the time when there was bombing, the whole political turmoil of the time, and that marked that period. But yet Peg struggled on, kept her family together, working hard for her family, her two remaining girls and the two boys. They were at the centre of her life, she kept her work going on, the business going on, the family going on. And indeed for Peg it was a heavy load to carry, but she carried it very strongly and very proudly because she was a person who had immense inner strength, resilience, deep personal faith. And that would be Peg, keep going, have that strength to keep going, that faith that the hand of God was in everything that happened in her life. And she carried on quietly, resiliently, and single-handedly carried on with life, rearing our family and keeping the family business going, keeping everything going on. And that's how she carried on over the years, looking after the family bar for that number of years single-handedly until she retired. And then she took on 10 years hard work, heading up the very successful rehab confectionery department in St. Abnett's Hospital in Monaghan. And although she was somebody who was inherently apolitical, Peg, through a popular vote, was elected mayoress of Clonus Town. And during that time, she continued to devote her spare time to so many voluntary community groups, projects, whatever was going on to help others, Peg would be at the centre. Always during that time, she devoted her spare time, as I say, to doing good for so many people. And that's how Peg went to live her life, first and foremost with family or hard work, and then reaching out in a spirit of goodness and generosity living out her faith of love and care for others in so many voluntary community projects, doing good for others in life. And then at the grand old age of 85 years, Peg moved from Clonus here to Castle Ross, just a few miles up the road in 2007, to spend her final years. And she wanted there to be closer to her eldest daughter, Marie, and she wanted to have her own home there, which she did have, got a lovely home, being one of the first into Castle Ross village, a lovely home at the front, along in from the main road, where she bought her own home and settled down so very well. And I suppose 
I got to know her very well coming to Castle Ross because when we were at Mass in Castle Ross in the nursing home in the oratory little church there, Peg with others would be always there. She loved coming to our Mass and loved being there and very quickly made friends because friend Peg was that outgoing, friendly person. And she made friends with her next door neighbour who came in after her into the village with Betty Burns from Shercook made wonderful friends, they'd always sit together at Mass, be there together at Mass. <clears throat> together with Dimna Hamill, who was a like part of a threesome, they loved their chairs together, they'd be there for Mass together, for the rosary, the prayers, and of course a little chat, always there to care for each other, support each other, and to share what was going on in life. And that would be Peg, loved her friends, loved her neighbours, and above all her faith, and I know coming to her Mass, was very special to her to Mass each week in Castle Ross and then any ceremonies going on around the oratory to have them into her own home over the television. And again, Peg went on quietly with life. And I suppose getting to know her was lovely as I did at different times to visit her own home. She always kept it so very neat, so tidy, always the cup of tea and the chat. And I remember always her warm smile, equaled by her friendship, always somebody who dressed well, loved flowers, loved nature, loved the best things in life. And that's how Peg lived life, loving the best of what was good in life and a wonderful person to adapt. She adapted so very well to Castle Ross, loved her home there, made her friends there and loved life there. And that's how Peg carried on with life. And I suppose recent times been more difficult for her as she was more and more confined to her own home as the years went on. But Peg wasn't one to complain blessed by our families and family and those who cared for her in recent times, she carried on very quietly and indeed loved to be linked into life, blessed with a good memory and cherished all that was going on in life, right up you might say until very, very recently. And again, she was the person sustained by love of family, by her hard work over the years, a wonderful work in voluntary organisations, doing good for others and her friendship and her love and her strong faith all was central to her life. So today as we come and thank God for a very long life and a very full life, we said thanks to God for Peg, as I say, a life love, lived to the full with a wonderful love for family, a wonderful love for her own children, her grandchildren, her great-grandchildren. They were so very precious in her life, family, and then friends and those near and dear to her, all very special in her life. And today we pray that God will be good to her. And now that that early, early journey has ended, we pray that she will enjoy true peace and happiness in the presence of God. And today as we remember and pray for Peg, we remember again the deceased for her family, her own family was so precious to her, as we remember her late husband Seamus, as we mentioned, her daughter Bernadette. And we also remember in our prayers her brothers Matty, Jim, Tom, Mick, Pete, and her sister, Sis. We think of all of them who have gone before her, and we pray that be united again as one family, today in peace and happiness, in God's presence. And we pray again that God would bless and comfort her own family today, as a family of very precious to her, particularly as we think of her immediate family, her daughter, so precious to her, so very good to her in recent times, together with, indeed, the boys, Marie Caplis, Veronica Morrison, and then her two sons, James and Paul, and then the wider family circle, we pray today for them all that God will comfort them this day as we pray that Peg will enjoy peace and happiness forever in God's presence. Eternal rest grant unto Peg, O Lord, let perpetual light shine upon her, and may she rest in peace, and may her soul and the souls of all the faithfully parted through the mercy of God rest in peace.
Pray, my sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept sacrifice in your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, these offerings we bring to your altar as we pray together for Peg. We thank you, Lord, for her long life, her great faith, her commitment to family, her generosity in life. We pray, Lord, that she may enjoy peace and happiness forever in your presence, through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of the resurrection has dawned, that those sad by the certainty of death may be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful people, Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling of ours turns to death, an eternal dwelling is made ready for us in heaven. And so we join the angels and saints in their unending hymn. Holy, holy. My heart, my heart adores you. My heart is glad to say the words, you are holy, Lord. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the Jew fall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up, for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, 
we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Larry our Bishop, all the clergy religious, and all your people. Remember Peg McCabe, whom you have called from this world to yourself, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them, Lord, into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. When we pray together at the family of God, we pray with confidence as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days by the help of your mercy. We may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And for a moment we pray for God's gift of peace in our own hearts or homes, and that Peg will enjoy eternal peace in God's presence. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. And for those coming to Holy Communion, we invite you to just come up to Central Island and make your way down along these sides, along the wall. a time for remembering, a time to recall the trials and the triumphs, the fears and the falls. There's a time to be grateful for the moments so blessed, the jewels of our memories where love is our guest. There is gold that is gleaming in a past we once knew. 
In our tears and our laughter, t'was love brought us through. There's a road we have traveled where the sunlight has kissed that carries us onwards where loved ones are missed. There is treasure in our fields, there is treasure in our skies, there is treasure in our dreaming from the soul to the eyes. Oh, wherever we gather in the light of God's grace, and for all that we a promise of God that is written in the stars for all who may travel no matter how far. God will be your companion in each journey you make in the shadow Lighten the way. There is treasure in our fields, there is treasure in our skies, there is treasure in our dreaming from the soul to the eye. In the light of God's grace, and for all that we remember, there will always be a place. There is treasure in our fields, there is treasure in our skies, there is treasure dreaming from the soul to the eyes. For wherever we gather in the light of God's grace and for all that we And as we thank Jesus for coming to us today in Holy Communion, we just remember again in thanksgiving all the blessings that came to so many through the life of Peg. We think of those many blessings as we pray that Peg will now share the fullness of God's presence forever. And we pray again as we think of Jesus present with us for Peg's family. We pray God's blessings on them. And we think of very specially today of our grandchildren, Ria and Shireen, and their families in Australia. Hopefully they can hear us for our Mass today. Indeed, we pray that God would bless and comfort them, and that they again, with all the family, will be comforted in the knowledge that after her long life, indeed her sufferings and her struggles in life, 
the peg now shares peace with God. And again, as we think of Peg, her great humor, her love of laughter, her love of fun, that she was so much central to life, she will always be and have a special place in the hearts of the many who knew her. And we remember in a special way God's blessings today for all of our good to care for Peg in these recent years, the doctors, the nurses, the carers, and particularly Dr. Corr and our carers, Leona, Charlie, Carla, Eileen, and Rosemary. We think of them and the wonderful help and kindness and gentleness and all that cared for Peg in recent times. And we remember to our family who's very good and loyal to her. So we pray that the Lord will reward all for their kindness, their gentleness, all who are good to her. And as we mentioned, we just remember so many of our family gone before her today. Peg's family, in a special way, we think of her late husband Seamus and our daughter Bernie. I need all the deceased of our own family, the Mannion family, and our married family, the McCabe family. We to pray today that Peg will be reunited with one and all in God's presence. So today, as we think of Peg and pray God's blessings on all those near and dear to her, I pray her lovely little reflection when we think of Jesus present with us today. We think that Peg is gone from us here in this earthly world, but Peg is very much with us, her presence with us through the goodness of God, and with the goodness of her life that will always be an inspiration above all to her family. And this little reflection especially chosen by the family called that she is gone. You can shed tears that she is gone or you can smile because she has lived. You can close your eyes and pray that she will come back or you can open your eyes and see all that she has left. Your heart can be empty, but you can't see her. Or you can be full of the love that you shared. You can turn your back on tomorrow and live yesterday. Or you can be happy for tomorrow because of yesterday. You can remember Peg and only that she is gone. Or you can cherish her memory and let her live on. You can cry and close your mind, be empty and turn your back. Or you can do what she would want you to do. You can smile, open your eyes, love and go on as she loved and cherished life. And let us pray. God of mercy, look kind with kindness on Peg, who has set down the burden of her years in your presence. As she served you faithfully throughout her long life, through the love of her family, her generosity of spirit, and her goodness to other people, especially those in need in life. We pray now that she will be caught up in your eternal love and be forever happy in your presence with all of her loved ones, her family, who have gone before her, as we make our prayer through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you, and let us bless the Lord. And before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of Peg. May our farewell express our affection for her, may it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet her again when the love of Christ which conquers all things destroys even death itself. And for a moment we pray together in silence for Peg as in our bless her mortal remains.
Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Saints of God, come to her aid. Hasten to meet her, angels of the Lord. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. May Christ, who called you to give to himself, may angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Eternal rest grant unto Peg, O Lord, let perpetual light shine upon her. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Into your hands, Father of mercy, sweet commander, sister Peg, in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings you bestowed upon Peg during her long life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of a fellowship with the saints in Christ Jesus. Merciful Lord, turn towards us, listen to our prayers, open the gates of paradise to your servant, and help us to remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and we are with you and with Peg forever, through Christ our Lord. And as we come to the end of our funeral mass, again, we thank you all for being here, here in the church to join our mass. We thank in a special way the family for preparing your Mass very well today as the chose readings, prayers, reflections for our Mass. And very special thanks here to Barry Hughes for the beautiful singing and music that's greatly enriched our ceremony. And we thank also Shane Birdie, our video man, for providing our webcam today. Hopefully that we can, see, can be heard and seen as far away as Australia for the family to join in our celebration very much of Peg's life. So Peg will be ready to rest and clone us, so as a community and family, we now take Peg to her place of rest. O oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. When Christ shall come in shout of acclamation to take me home, what joy shall fill my heart. Then I shall vow in humble adoration and there proclaim, my God, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art. 